Hello everybody, welcome to We'd Rather Be Reading. I'm Jerica. And I'm Leah. So how was your week? What do, oh, it's Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. Here in Sweden. I mean, it's yes. different everywhere. Like I remember when I first moved to England yeah. and then it was Mother's Day. It's like in February in the oh. UK or something like that. <laughs> and I sent my mom like, happy Mother's Day cards. And my mom's like... Are you okay? <laughs> like you're, Are you you're lost? A few months time, off here. <laughs> <laughs> but as I say, like Father's Day is in June in Canada, mm. but it's in November here because right. my son is born on Father's Day in Canada. Oh. But then he was christened on Father's Day here because uh-huh. we christened him in Sweden. That's so kind of nice. We stuck with a Father's Day theme. So for Swedish Mother's Day, you got a book from your son and he a poem from your daughter. It's like I so know. perfect kids. <laughs> it was great. And I got brunch and I got candy and I got cards and I got uh, like vouchers for free massages, which is excellent. Ooh. I love those. So yeah, no, a good day all around. It yeah. was pretty great actually. And then we went um, for my niece's first birthday party, so we Cute. got to do that too. Cute. So that was very sweet. Um, so yeah, how was your mother's day? It was nice. My kids surprised me, and you know what their surprise is? Because they're two and four. Their surprises are going to be for them, of course. Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. like, mom, this is what you're going to want: marshmallows. Candy. Yes. What else does mom want? She wants rainbow unicorn pillows. And of course. She, and she wants to go to the beach and go swimming in 10 degree water. Of course. Yes. They know you so well. So <laughs> Thank well. you kids for having a mother's day. I remember the best, well I mean this was probably the best mother's day I've had actually this year. But before I got once, I got hot dog bun filled with gummy bears and Nutella. That was my daughter's cream. <laughs> For breakfast, I was like, it's a lot of sugar first thing in the morning, but thank you, Tony. My kids were like, well, I will make you dinner today. Actually, my four-year-old calls dinner lunch constantly. She never changes it. We correct her all the time. She will not change it. Dinner is called lunch, and that's the end of that story. Yeah. And so for lunch, dinner, she was like, this is what you're going to have, your favorite Nutella. Like, oh, yeah. In a whisper voice as if it was a secret. We're going to have Nutella and strawberries. And then I was like, we don't have strawberries at home. (laughs) And then the little one was like, strawberries? We can have strawberries? I'm like, no, 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 everybody. We don't have strawberries at home. And then breakdown. I was like, guys, this is Mother's Day. Stop screaming. You're yeah. supposed to be making me dinner. You're it's supposed dinner. to be nice and not fight. <laughs> this is literally all I ask for Mother's Day. Please just don't fight. Yeah, don't fight. Yeah. I mean, like, the volume could also be much lower. Mm-hmm. If we could just tone down the volume of my children, sometimes that would be just good for my sanity. Mine aren't so loud anymore, but they're, they're bigger, so maybe... Maybe they were loud back in the days. They were very loud. So, have you had any chance to read something <laughs> this week, though? Uh, I I didn't. Have, okay, yeah, I finished that trilogy mm-hmm. of the um, triad, the thruple relationship. But you know what? I have a theory, or <laughs> I have an observation. You know how much I love um, the not three person relationship. What was I was going to say the um, reverse horror. No. <laughs> Swingers? No. The, no. <laughs> no. The cheating I, on everyone. <laughs> the hermaphrodites. No. The, this is this does not paint a good <laughs> picture of who I am. <laughs> no. The, the last time as many people as we can into this relationship. <laughs> Without, you know, <laughs> one man a night, but no more than one woman, you know? <laughs> Living in my own fantasies Your in all of the books. Jericho's <laughs> reverse harem, seven <laughs> gods, one for each day. It's very much on theme. I love too. that, but I want to read that book and want to be in that book immediately. Especially that they're gods. That's it. You won me over. Yeah, but well, one's won. a dragon, and one's a god, one's <laughs> a gargoyle, a of course. Oh, this made my whole week. <laughs> I cannot. And an elf, of course. You've got to have an elf. In <laughs> you have to have elves and dragons and gods. Wow, can we write this a book? Um, of course. We're starting right now. Better, better get this wrapped up and done so we can start writing. 
We're calling it Jericho's Reverse Horror with Dragons. <laughs> and then we're going to have a horrible cover and you can all judge yes, us. It's going to be I great. Can't I can't wait. I, can we have like guys. seven covers so you get so confused? Of course, we're going to have like... <laughs> Like seven different editions with a different cover to just make sure that the people that love this book will have to buy it seven times yes. to get all of the cover. Just so we can make uh, some extra money. It's going to be great. That was a good laugh right there. Yeah. So, oh. so you've been reading quality literature right here. Yeah. I, finished, I finished that series because uh, I loved it so much. Their relationship was so beautiful and he ends up being the king. Mm-hmm. And they, they hit his boyfriend and girlfriend, they're all together, end up becoming a consorts to the king. Mm -hmm. And the country is actually a European country, but like a totally made up European country. So like all the, the, you know, the princess store and all of that, where they're from. Yeah, exactly. Belgravia. Yeah, this is called Solania. Same, same. Like they just made up a new... And, it's and it always Greece. looks similar to Switzerland for some reason, oh. all of these countries. <laughs> yeah, that's strange. <laughs> they do, they, they do. all do. This no. tiny little country in Europe that looks a lot like Switzerland. <laughs> which then Americans, Greece. sorry Americans, will then confuse Sweden with Switzerland. With Switzerland. <laughs> <laughs> Sweden. And, yeah, and then you will all think that we live like in these countries. Yes. It could be a nice thing. You Just imagine us in a castle in... What was it called? Sylvania? Thelania. Thelania. <laughs> Pogravia, Moldavia, yeah. whatever. Yeah. These are all the names of all I the think pretend Moldova countries. Moldova is an actual Moldova, country. <laughs> but Mo- not Moldovia, but that... No. No. Anyway, yeah. so they have a happily ever after, actually. And the country accepts throuples mm, as... Of course, because, you know, most royal <laughs> families are completely allowed and have all the Man. free rules to have all of the marriage with the vampires and the dragons and the throuples as they want. There's no paranormal in this book, but it was a throuple relationship that was accepted by the royal family and by the country. And then... She also, they decide they're going to have a baby. And the way that they get around it, because who knows who the father is, because mm-hmm. they're all well, sleeping maybe it looks together. maybe like dad, but sure. They both have dark hair, which you would have appreciated. Oh, I do like that. I'm... So she has a baby, ends up being a girl, and the royal king formally adopts the kid. So no matter which sperm it came from, it will be the line to the throne. Uh-huh. That's still weird. Doesn't matter. It was Is a it happy like the granddaddy <laughs> that, that adopts the child or whoever, who's the king? He's the king. He has a oh. relationship. He's in the relationship. Okay, so one of them is the king and the other one is just not. There, one of them is the king and then the other one is a consort and the other one's a consort. Oh, okay, okay. Consorts mm-hmm. to the king. Anyways, I approve of this relationship and you know how much I, we, I started this conversation like this, how I like to have... Uh, Wow, I blanked again. <laughs> love triangle is what I was trying to say. Love triangle. I you love know, the lo- normal kind where there's only there's there's yes. three people involved in the whole thing, but you okay, only but, end up with, with one of them. But like, now, but together. can you imagine a love triangle where you you could get both? I don't want this. This is a win-win situation for me. <laughs> well, and they okay. all fall in love and the men fall in love with each other and the woman. What? This is my not- m- magical relationship where the love triangle ends up being a happily ever after for all of them. Good. And do you know what I realized? <laughs> that it's You've Pride. Read this. No. No, God, no. It's Pride Month. Yay! And and the book that we talked about last week was actually about lesbians, right? Because right. it was Gideon the Ninth. Yeah. And we had a little bit of a theme because we had a lesbian theme in this one as well. The good girls. Yes. Yes. So I think this is great. I like this. We need to get some... Uh, we need to stick to this theme, I think. I'm not sure about this book that we started, how that one's going to fall on this. But I, no. I mean, we'll figure it out. We'll mm. figure it out. I did some reading too this week. Yeah, not, tell me. Not so, so much. Uh, but I read um, Hamnet, which was uh, recommended to me by a friend of mine who just basically, she writes books herself. And she was like, don't want to write anymore. This book is perfect. I can never live up to this. Oh, no. <laughs> um, so it's by Maggie O'Farrell. And it's basically... 
Um, it's a story about William Shakespeare, but he's never actually named as William Shakespeare okay. in this book. They always talk about him as the Latin tutor or the brother or mm. the son or the husband or the father. He's never actually named in the whole thing. Everyone else has a name, but not him. Mm. And it's, uh, it's basically the story of his family, of his wife and his kids. And it tells you, like, the first chapter that one of the kids going to die. And so when it happens... I cried. I cried so much. It was so sad. And I I mean, I don't usually cry. I mean, kids shouldn't die. That's... When I read books. I mean, this is like whatever. He lived way back in the day, like 1500s. Okay. You know, like yeah, this yeah. is Shakespeare. It's mm -hmm. And he dies of like the, the plague, basically. Mm -hmm. like, uh, it's it's so sad. And when, when the father finds out, it is... Yeah, it, it made me cry. It was so sad. But it's really, really well written. And it's really good. And I really, really enjoyed it, actually. I have about 40 pages left. <laughs> so you're mad that, that you have, have to be... <laughs> no, but I actually put it down last night because I was like, I'm just going to finish it. But then I was tired. And I'm like, no, I want to actually read, read every word. Oh, and I don't want to, like, nice. fall asleep and be like, well, I, <laughs> hmm. I don't remember where... <laughs> if I stop flipping pages or if I, you know, like... So I'm almost done. It's really good. Really, really good. Um, so that's excellent. I've been reading some um, quality literature, like I like to call it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Unlike my <laughs> repertoire. No throuples. Not, I mean, there can be throuples <laughs> in quality literature too. There's, there's no, you know, there cannot be this in that. But um, I really like this one. It's more that's... of a, a book book and it, um, it, it got, it's won all sorts of prizes. And oh, amazing. So yeah, it's pretty good. Um, well, it's really good, actually. I read that and... I can't remember if I read anything else. I've had a little bit of a slow week for mm. reading. I've been Me listening too. to music a lot. Oh, that's uh, right. Yeah. So that's what I've been doing. But um, we read The Good Girls and then we started to read our new book of the week. But what did you think about Good Girls? Well, like I told you last week, mm? unreliable narrators mm. is my thing. And they were so unreliable. These bitches were lying mm. the whole way through. Like every Everybody. time you came back to anyone, they were like, oh, yeah. I didn't tell you this, but I was actually out this night. I know, yeah, I didn't tell you this, but I did actually know this person. I, I didn't tell you this, but I lied about what I was doing. You know, all of them, all the time. Like, so unreliable. So any story you got at first was just completely not true. What did you think about the detectives? <laughs> because we were listening oh to God, it. And I gotta detectives. say that they sounded really, really bad at their jobs. They did, fully. They were like, oh, but you did not tell us this before. And the girl was yeah. like, yeah, but that's because... Mm. And then they're like, end of interview. <laughs> yeah, no. These detectives should have done a better job, for sure. For sure. It feels like they... Well, I mean, I guess maybe they were interviewing these girls kind of like, can we talk to you instead of you have to talk to us kind mm. of thing. And then just hoping to get some information. But, um, yeah. It, the whole... Yeah, they were not good at doing their job. And clearly, this whole school was terrible with the... I mean, spoiler. Spoiler, it's uh, Coach G here. He's, uh, he's the, the terrible, terrible, terrible... In terrible. my notes, I don't even need to pull up my notes to know the note that I wrote down. How could he be sleeping or molesting or abusing all of the students like not just a couple of them like but he a was, lot he was of a students. couple of them because he he had a relationship with emma who was the the girl who died a couple of years ago uh now, yeah. emma was the one who's disappearing he had a relationship who is it lizzie the one that was, uh, lizzie. lizzie was the yeah. one yeah so he had an actual relationship with her where she you know as She's a child, so yeah. so clearly she cannot consent properly to this, and it's mm. grooming and it's abuse regardless. Yeah. But she was thinking she was in love with him, and she actually wanted to be with him. And it's driving her to, to drink, to, to drugs, because he introduced her to all of these as well. Like, mm. um, And then at the end of it, does he kill her? I'm not sure. He might have killed her, or yeah. she killed herself. Uh, regardless, she, she is dead no, because, it was because of this. Of it was yeah. Uh, it was because of him fully, yeah. but I don't know if he pushed her or if she, she was driven to it by just his actions kind of thing. I can't remember. And then the Emma finds this out by reading Liz's diary. And mm. because this guy is the coach, but he's also the counselor. So anytime any of these girls are troubled, they have to go and see him. 
And I mean, he's clearly predator, grooming, asshole, bastard, should be castrated and, and thrown in a pit to die. Um, because he takes all of these girls that are troubled, that are struggling, and he plays fully on insecurities and on on their reputation, on all sorts of things to get them to just not tell anyone that he's basically touching them inappropriately or mm. trying to coax them into to doing things for him. So it happened to Claude, and she was raped basically by him a bunch of times. Yeah. And then she tries to reclaim her sexuality by by feeling like she owns it, by then sleeping around a little bit and, and, and choosing her own... Um, partners which great good for her but and she you know, had a, has a happy ending with jamie that was does. quite nice yeah for a um, second i was like is claude also gonna be gay <laughs> because everyone just ended up becoming bi or gay by the end of it yeah avery is gay or she's bisexual and she yeah. is with gwen who is liz's younger sister and Coach G doesn't seem to be after Gwen, right? She's She seems to be escaping his clutches. Mm, but he's still inappropriate with everybody. But he's on Avery, and he's on Emma, and he's on uh, Claude, and he mm. was definitely on Lizzie. Yeah. So um, everyone in this book was so abused by So all of him. these girls, they basically band together to try to frame him. Yeah. By faking Emma's death. Right. And Emma also struggles at home because her dad is the chief of the police mm-hmm. and he is, he's very controlling. And he, she's trying to win the scholarship and he's basically saying, you don't have to because I'm not going to let you go regardless. Right. You have to stay here. You need to stay with me. And he's I was, for a while, I was thinking too, that, that he was actually molesting her, but I don't think he is. He's just uh, like controlling and wants to keep her close and, and not letting her um, do anything, basically. So, um, And then her mom has been MIA for three years. Yeah. Uh, and I wrote down here, murdered? Question mark. Don't really know. Be- Don't but really the know. dad didn't seem out of the realm of possibility that he would be able to kill the mom. Mm. But throughout this whole book, all of my notes are, okay, there's a Divino fun. It's a jealousy murder. Mm-hmm. Avery, she's bi. It's a love murder. <laughs> like <I'm, laughs> Emma's mom hasn't called in three years. It's a serial killer murder. Like thinking that yeah. she was also murdered and Anna from Anna's Run and Lizzie. And I was like, yeah. oh, it's a serial killer murder. And then uh, Gwen is gay, bi, and maybe her and Avery teamed up against Emma. Jealousy murder. I went back to the jealousy murder. Mm-hmm. So this was some of my notes that everything was these kinds of murders. How did this teacher get away with molesting all the students? It's a revenge murder gone wrong, question mark. (laughs) But I mean, it is in a way, it's a revenge thing gone wrong because they accidentally kill um, this homeless guy who the coach was sending after after them, after one of them, after Emma. Yeah. Yeah. because he he knows that Emma's on on the path of of exposing him and exposing everything, and I mean he's a proper like predator serial um, groomer. He lies to Lizzie about his mother being dead to gain sympathy, and it turns out she's not, and mm. and all of this like he is textbook. And I mean, yeah, it's terrifying that a guy can get away with molesting so many. But I mean, it is not out of the realm of possibility. Like we see it all the time, not For all sure. the time, all the time. Yeah, but, yeah. but we see it enough it in society that mm. that you know a coach has molested like half of his team, or you know, so many girls over the years. So and the news and today, it's like, actually here in Sweden that there is a teacher that has been molesting his students. And I mean, it is, it is the fucking worst thing you can do honestly yeah. if you are put in place of trust with children yeah uh, but i mean i guess if you are if you are a predator like that i guess you're going to seek that kind of situation too so it's it's scary you not... gotta be like a, a there's gotta be something seriously wrong with you and you're probably going to be fairly good at covering your tracks like sociopath kind of yeah um, manipulating people. I don't know enough about this. I'm not a psychologist, just putting this out there. <laughs> I know nothing. But but it's... Um, I mean, yeah. He is awful and 
he ends up did he die I, go to jail he I, gets caught he gets caught and, he gets but caught. i don't know if it's die or jail because they were wrapping up the girls more than they were wrapping up his story yeah and he never got a voice so we don't yeah. actually know which i think is good he doesn't and the police one. didn't say anything I in the end <laughs> and emma she just keeps pretending to be dead and she, she gets leaves. away yeah yeah she, she basically escapes her dad so i mean happy ending not really no no um i'm happy that claude is moving on trying to start a relationship with jamie i feel that all of these girls should get therapy for sure, with someone who is not their freaking coach yeah. and will try to molest them by someone who is an actual psychologist that will help them through this trauma because this is trauma. Mm. And um, yeah, that's that's what I think. I think that it was a fun like book, but touched on a lot of like dark themes, mm-hmm. um, which there were notices of before reading the book saying, by the way, there's yeah. a lot of trigger things that happen throughout mm-hmm. the book. Um, but I think that they did it in a really respectful way and showed the the true trauma that happens behind all uh, these kinds of situations. Yeah. While still making it an interesting sort of fun read. Yeah. I mean, I would only change maybe the investigators, the detectives yeah. role in this. Uh, because I feel like if you're going to have it like the interview style, it kept switching away from it too. Like it started mm-hmm. with a couple of questions and then it went into some other parts and then it came back to like end of interview. And it was like that I would have maybe skipped either have just the interview the way they are and then have everything else separate. Mm-hmm. Um, but I like, I always like uh, unreliable narrators because it makes it more fun and you have to use your sleuthing skills. And it was nice to have so many narrators. Yes. I actually read a review after I finished the book. And in the review, it said, did you notice? And I thought maybe you would have picked up on it because you're miscontinuity. <laughs> um, that the narrators switched characters. That they were different. They were playing different people. Yeah. There was a narrator switch some time after the middle of the book and I can't say that I really truly noticed it because the girls kind of blended together oh for me anyway. They sounded the same. They sounded the same, I right? I had a hard time honestly <clears throat> keeping them separate just by listening to their voice. Like I had to listen for other clues. Yeah. For sure. Um, so no, I did not pick on pick up on that. I'm talking about narrators, I just started listening to a book right now and she it, has an Atlanta accent, mm-hmm. but her father has a normal California accent. And I'm like, but if you're going to do your voice in the accent, your dad also, unless you say your dad is from somewhere else kind of thing, mm-hmm. sh- you should also do your dad's voice yeah. in an accent. So <laughs> it's throwing me off. But anyways, it's kind of a I guess unless, show. you know... The dad's from California, moved to Atlanta, and then she grows up with accents, but he retains his. Because that there are situations like that people don't always... People are not like me, who listens to anyone and just start talking exactly like them <laughs> in a very bad way, because My I'm terrible at that accent. It is, especially if you're British, I will copy you, and I'm sorry about that. <laughs> no. I really... But it brings it out in me. I think I learned English in a very British accent. I lived in England for a few years. Mm. It, it comes very naturally to me when I hear other people speaking it and then it kind of goes away because no one else in my life speaks <laughs> with that accent usually so right. then I fall into this whatever in between the state it usually is and then I do you pick up on the French Canadian accent oh, no, from no, your no. husband oh, God, no. <laughs> but he doesn't really have a very strong French Canadian no not accent. so strong but it's still there I mean other people it, yeah yeah there has a very strong French Canadian <laughs> accent uh, but he doesn't really know so we're moving on from the good girls, I think. I think we said everything yeah. we wanted to say. It was a fun read. I would uh, recommend it, mm-hmm. um, especially if you like different, many different narrators and unreliable narrators. Um, but do keep in mind that there are serious triggers in there if you, mm-hmm. if you are um, sensitive to that kind of stuff. And we're going to move on to our next book, which is A Song of Wraith and Wraiths and Ruin, which actually starts by... Trigger warning. That's true. Uh, a proper one that this book will deal with, like, 
parents dying. It will deal with the excessive violence. It will deal with all of these things. So mm. if you're feeling Animal sensitive, don't death. read it. Yeah. I appreciated mm-hmm. that. I was like, oh, noted, noted. Yeah, I think it's good. It gave mm. a little bit of spoilers, though, but mm. it's okay. And this book is by Roseanne A. Brown. Um, and this book starts uh, with Malik, who's a refugee. He's mm-hmm. with his older and younger sisters, uh, Leila and Nadia. And they're trying to get to... feel like the capital, but I'm not sure. Yeah, but you not want to know what the capital is called. What is it called? It's, it's me. It's my last name every single time. I heard them say this. I was like, wait a second. Did Leah know this? Was it in the description? Because I don't think I read it. That they were like the Zeron slash Zeroni people. And I was like, whoa. But wait, did I I mishear that? No. So the capital is Zeron and they call them Zeroni. Fair enough. And I was like, what? You found your people. Good. So they're trying to go there. (laughs) There's a festival going on. There's a comet that's passing by the earth Mm -hmm. that creates this festival called Solstasia. And people from their country or part of the country, I'm not sure where Malik and his sisters are from, but they're not welcome there. They cannot Mm. flee to there. Um, So they have fake papers to try to get into the city, but they get tricked by this child who steals these papers from them. And then they're like, oh, this is terrible. And then we switch to our second narrators, two narrators, I like this already, uh, who is Karina. And she is the princess. Um, of Zeron. Of Zeron. And she's out dis- in disguise to enjoy herself. She's at a bar, the something seal, I can't remember what it's called. Um, and she challenges the musician who's uh, playing there to a competition. If mm. she can uh, get the crowd going more than he can, then she will win. Uh, or if he can get them going more than she can, then he will win. And they make a wager. She will take his money or he will get... I can't remember what he was going to Her. Do. He will get her. He will get her he for will the get night. Her. And okay. she was like, ugh. Yeah. That is yuck. <laughs> yuck. Uh, but then she's, she plays and she's actually much better than him. She speaks all of the different languages. So yeah. She does the song in all of the different languages. And she wins. So takes the money. She seems to be saving money. For something to try to get away, I believe, because um, she has stash in her room as well. And uh, then we switch back to Malik. Um, they have to figure out another way to get into the city because they don't have their papers. And um, they, but they stop to listen to someone telling a story. Mm-hmm. And in the story, there's a riddle, and Malik kind of mutters the answer under his breath, kind of thing, because he's good at riddles. And his sister goes like, oh, "The answer!" and she shouts it out, and then. Um, fire, gets the attention of this this person telling the story and at the end they get called to the front and she's like because you answered the riddle correctly you get a wish so the sister goes I want to get into Zeron mm. and then there's a big explosion Yep, the lady's eyes turn purple and there's a big explosion and there's chaos and everyone is running all over the place and they manage to make it inside the wall because the wall has crumbled there for a uh, or something. They, mm-hmm. they make it inside the city anyways. Um, and uh, then the princess jumps back to the princess yeah. and uh, the guy that she wagered against the musician comes yeah. up to her, tries to threaten her for something. Mm-hmm. She gets away from him, but then some guards come and yeah. say, we're taking you to your mother. Yes. And that's where I finished off at about chapter five. I read five. a little bit longer. So um, we find out that Malik here can see the supernatural world. Oh, yeah. He sees wraiths and something. He's, he's a bit special, but he's always been told that this is wrong and he should not use this. Um, and he runs in to Karina. Okay. Just inside the city wall. Very briefly. They kind of meet and then they're gone. Okay. But he catches a glimpse of her silvery hair. Mm-hmm. When he sees it. Um, so that's where I stopped. So I went slightly further than you. Um, right. But not by much. So prediction time. I predict that Malik and Karina will find each other. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I think... I, I don't know. I got a little bit like... Stuff's it's, happening, but I don't know but where this wor- is going. It's a world there's, building, exactly. right? So and there's a there's lot a of information festival. to take in. Yeah. Um, different but kinds she of seems people. to want to leave. So I'm guessing that they will try to escape together. Like, they will end up together one way or another, and he will help her get out of the city or get out of whatever. 
So I think they're going to escape together. Um, and I think they're going to fall in love. How I old is Malik? Love. I feel like he is around 17 or 18. Okay. He sounds like a child in those yeah. early chapters. Like, like I would have, when I first read it, I'm like, he's going to be like 11 Small. or something. But yeah. I think he's in his teens. I think okay. he's in his late teens. And I think she's around the same. She career. is. Yeah. Um, and in this world, there's religion. And the religion is based on there being seven gods or goddesses. Right. And they Elemental, all protect right? a day of the week. So cool. whatever day of the week you're born is the god or goddess you're going to belong to. Right. Um, and you get the, the insignia inscribed on your hand. Um, and, and they're elemental, right? They're air and earth. That kind of fire. stuff. Yeah, light. And, but there's yeah. seven of them. Um, um, and the city of Zeron is... The country is... Has been a country since it was taken from the pharaoh. There was some kind of conquering going on there. But I was just into this when I was thinking of, of what could happen. That maybe these seven gods, goddesses... Uh, Maybe there are the gods before. Maybe we're going to go into some kind of religious mm-hmm. champion of the gods kind of thing. Um, I thought maybe that could be a thing. Uh, and Karina has the silver hair of the royal family. Right. So there's some kind of moving down of, of genes as well, like that makes them special because of the hair. Right. Um, but neither Malik or Karina seem particularly religious. They both kind of dismiss their little brands on their hands as as unimportant. So I just kind of feel like religion will probably play a, a, play a role in this, in their, their faith. But I couldn't think of anything else than that. No, they're, yeah. uh, the world building is too new in mm-hmm. order to properly predict, I think. Also, I have no idea really like who they are in their personality yet mm-hmm. either. Because yeah. I assumed Malik was much younger, so I didn't predict love relationship there yeah. i figured that that he would help her because he has magic yeah but if he's around the same age as her then then they will end up in a relationship i think so too but i don't know if that's going to be the forefront of what the story is about i think the story is going to be a lot more of world building magic uh mm-hmm. and the wraiths um coming into play i thought that there was going to be that the wraiths are, like, sneaking in because he keeps seeing them as if they're, like, gathering more and more. Yep. And he's afraid of them also. Mm-hmm. So they're evil. So I thought maybe that this is something that only he could see and that they will then have to battle against. But they will need him. Yeah. Yeah. That could make sense. Uh, I guess we're going to have to read on and see. But we should also judge this song, this book by its cover. It's called A Song of Wraiths and Ruin and the title's obviously there on the cover. Yeah, so the cover is the queen or the princess. I think it's Karina on the cover. Um, she's wearing this green gown that's kind of billowing Wispy. around her, mm-hmm. uh, and she's got all these jewelry. She's in silver, and and she seems to have a um, scarf on her head or like a some kind of shawl on her head because we see her silver hair peeking out mm-hmm. at the front, but then it's it's like a, a shawl or something. Oh, on I her see, head. and then the cu- then the mandala continues behind her. And there's her. a manda- mandala behind her. Yeah, so cool. What do you so, think this book is about? I mean, it's got to be about royalty for sure. Yeah, she looks she's a queen. Uh, regal. She's a badass. African Absolutely. queen, but she's not an African queen because this is a whole new world. Because they're in the world, in the land of Zeron. Zeron. So, <laughs> we're going to have to get to reading this and um, we'll let you know what it's all about. Or follow along and we'll talk to you next week. Absolutely. Have a great one. Bye. Bye. We'd Rather Be Reading is an original podcast by Jerrica Zeron and Leah Sanfer. The music for The Penguins, written and performed by David Allred from the album The Transition, courtesy of Erased Tapes. Please check him out on Spotify and check us out on social media. We're on Facebook and Instagram at We'd Rather Be Reading and on Twitter at We'd Rather Read. You can also email us at We'd Rather Be Reading the Pod at gmail.com. Thanks for listening.